Apocalypse. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again, and welcome back to the show. Thanks for stopping by. Hope this find everybody safe, healthy, and in good spirits. And again, if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate that a lot. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon. This way you know the next time I come out with a video. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everything's going good. Hope you're feeling good. I just hope... Everybody's just dealing what we're dealing with, hoping that it gets over with soon and we could just move on and everybody could be happy again. A lot of crap going on out there, guys. A lot of things happening. We just got to hope for the best. So we'll just come together and do the right thing together. Anyway, with that being said, I got a quick... Weird but true story for you. And now I want to get into this quarantine stuff coming into New York, which is which is kind of crazy. But, you know, it's another thing we got to do what we got to do. This is like a really weird but true story here. This is like crazy. A French perfume maker is on a mission to create a potion that smells like the moon. Man, you can't make this stuff up. This is This is like crazy. Based on descriptions from famous astronauts. So he's going to ask some famous astronauts, what does the moon smell like? And he's going to make a freaking uh, a perfume out of that. Michael Mosoff, 66, who is also a geneticist, geneticist, the freak that is, says the scent will have metallic notes of carbon sulfur which is how Neil Armstrong described the space rock. I don't know, man. It just sounds like another gimmick to me. Because this guy could put piss in a bottle and tell you this is what the moon smells like and, and sell it, okay? Because we have no freaking idea what the moon smells like, okay? This guy says he's asking astronauts what it smells like. Unless it smelled really like crap or chocolate or apples, how do you describe what it smells like? He's putting down here, it smells like sulfuric acid. What is the freak this guy put? Metallic notes of carbon sulfur. Do you even know what that smells I don't know what it freaking smells like. So, again, he can go and get freaking turkey shit and put it in a freaking bottle and sell it to us and tell us this is what the moon smells like. Give me $50 a bottle. Scam. Scam written all over this. Bullshit written all over this. Don't buy it. It's crazy. And it's coming from a guy in France. French perfume maker. Wants to create a potion that smells like the moon. Come on. Give me a break. Crap. Built all over that one. Let, let's just, you know what? Let's just throw that one the freak out of here. Get out of here. All right, let's get into this quarantine stuff here. So if most of you might have heard, or if you haven't heard, if you fly into New York from certain states, you have to quarantine for 14 days. And they're serious about it. They, 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 they want to keep up with people. They're going to have you filling out forms and everything. This is crazy. Let me read a little article to you about it, and we'll go on from there. Quarantine list shuffle. Vis visitors from Hawaii, South Dakota, and U.S. Virgin Islands coming into New York will have to quarantine for two weeks, Governor Cuomo announced Tuesday. Alaska, New Mexico, Ohio, and Rhode Island were removed from the list, which now includes 33 states plus Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Travelers who fly into New York airports are required to fill out a form detailing where they have been while also agreeing to conduct a 14-day voluntary quarantine or face fines up to $2,000. States are added to the list if their data shows a positive coronavirus test rate higher than 10 per, 10 per, 
10,000 residents over a seven day rolling average or a 10% or higher positivity rate over the same time frame. So if you come in from any of these dirty three states, Hawaii, the Virgin Islands, Alaska, New Mexico, you have to fill out paperwork. You have to fill it out. And you have to turn it in. Now it's funny, um, the beginning of July I had flown down to South Carolina, which for most of you know I went home down there. Stayed there for a week, flew back. Now before I left the airport, I had to fill out the form, where I came from, where I was going, all that stuff, my phone number. When I flew into Kennedy Airport, I had to take that paper and to put it into a box, okay? I did that, got home, and I had to stay in the house for two weeks. Quarantined myself for two weeks, which was kind of annoying because I was away for a week on vacation and I had to come home and sit in the house doing nothing for two weeks, which was kind of crazy. But I, I did it, and that's how it has to be. And that's when I first started. Believe it or not, when I first started, you had the you know it was it was on a, on an honor system. Make sure you put the paper in the box, and they'll take it from there. I'm sure a lot of people just walked out through whatever. And I'm still not too sure how they're tracking you, you know, if you actually are. But I heard the next day, actually, that's when I first started. The next day, they actually had security guards or cops waiting at the exit there. When you came out, they actually made sure you put the, the thing in a box, you know, that form you filled out. So that's how they're finding out where you came from and where you went. Now, somebody actually mentioned to me that maybe they were actually, since they had your phone number, they were tracking your phone. I guess they could check where the ping is if, if you know, you're supposed to be in a, you gave them a, uh, an address, or if you came from another state, you were staying in a hotel, and your phone wasn't in that area, you're moving around. I guess that's how they track you. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I just read yesterday that somebody in Connecticut, because um, Connecticut also has the same kind of rules, they were actually fine. They they caught them um, not staying home um, and not not doing uh, their quarantine, and they wound up giving a two thousand dollar fine. Two people. So they did track them. They didn't say how, but they did track them. Let me give you a rundown and, and wait till you hear this of the states that are actually on this list. Now, if you're flying to, I believe it's Jersey, Connecticut, or New York from any of these states, I'm going to read to you. You have to stay home quarantined for 14 days. Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois. Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, North Carolina, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Puerto Rico, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, the Virgin Islands, and Wisconsin. And again, this is based upon a seven-day rolling average of positive tests in excess of 10% or number of positive cases exceeding 10 per 100,000 residents. Crazy. Based on, based on Governor Cuomo's executive orders 205 issued June 25, 2020, the following states and territories meet the criteria for required quarantine. So this is really messing a lot of things up for people because think about it. Let's say you live in, in Florida. You want to, you, you've got a week off. You want to come to, to, to New York for a week and a week, see Times Square, go around, you know, see Chinatown, Little Italy. You fly into New York, you fill out the paperwork. You got to stay in a hotel for two weeks. What is that? How is that possible? You got to actually have a three week vacation because you got to come here, spend two weeks in a hotel, then do your one week of looking around, and then go back to Florida. So not only is this, and again, we all understand the coronavirus is bad. It's it's killing people. It's making people sick. But how is it affecting us? What's going on with this whole travel thing and, and quarantine for two weeks? I mean, wouldn't it be better if the people that come in, they get tested for it or, you know, because now they have the one or two day quick test, take their temperature, test them, 
Let them enjoy their vacation. Let them do what they got to do. Maybe one day. You come in, you stay in your hotel for one day, they come, they check you. If you get okay, you give a band or whatever you got to do and say, okay, go enjoy your vacation. I don't know. I just think it's kind of crazy. I mean, how that works. Again, with me, I went away for one one week. I had to come back and stay in the house for two weeks. It was like just, just crazy. When's it going to end? When's it going to stop? So if you have any plans to come to New York, check that. Check and make sure you're not one of those states, which is almost all of them. I mean, it's 33, 34 states, whatever the case may be. And you come to New York, you got a quarantine for two weeks. So before you make the trip, check it out. I even heard that if you're driving here, when you're coming through tunnels and bridges, they're checking you to see where you came from, taking your information. So it's like, well, you know, there's no way around it kind of now. It's just really ridiculous. But again, I guess it's for the safety of everybody to try to keep this thing to go away, whatever the case may be. I don't want to get too much into that because everybody's got their own opinion on where this came from, what's happening, what's it doing, what's going on with it. And we could talk about that for hours too. So again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay out of trouble, wear your mask, clean your hands, do what you got to do until this stuff disappears. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Yeah, you, hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate it. The subscription button. Let's get some more subscribers here. Let's hit that bell icon. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Eat healthy. Do what you got to do. Enjoy life as much as you can right now. Until next time, take care of yourself. I'll see you soon.